Hello and welcome to Belgian Diecast Restorations. My name is Johan and this video is another contribution to the monthly Diecast and Modelers Community Challenge on Facebook. This month's challenge is to restore or refresh any TV or film vehicle. When you talk about TV or film franchises, you inevitably end up with Corgi, which almost had a monopoly on TV and movie licensed vehicles. I only have a handful of movie and TV vehicles and a lot of these models, like the Batmobile or James Bond's Aston Martin, are notoriously complicated. When going through my boxes, however, I found this 132 scale 1957 Ford Thunderbird. This Corgi model number 810 was introduced in 1982 and came in cream white with a black or orange detachable roof which is missing. This is of course not a TV or movie licensed vehicle, however we know that Corgi often reused castings. For example when Corgi's license for the TV series The Saint ended, Corgi reissued the white Jaguar from the series in plain black without the stickers. The same happened to this Ford Thunderbird. Announced as new in 1982, it was previously issued in 1980 in red as a licensed model from the TV series Vegas. Vegas was an American action series, featuring Robert Urich as Dan Tana, a private detective in, you guessed it, Las Vegas. The series ran from 1978 up to 1981, and I remember catching a couple of episodes as a kid. The Vegas Thunderbird model was produced by Corgi between 1980 and 1981. It didn't come with a roof, but instead had an antenna behind the seats. We actually can see the close-up hole for the antenna in the casting of the number 810 Thunderbird. The TV licensed Thunderbird also featured Yurik's character in the front seat aiming his gun. Unfortunately, I don't have the character for the Vegas car. Nevertheless, let's turn the shabby 1982 model back into its flaming red 1980 twin from the TV series. The model is held with four large rivets. Since Corgi rivets are domed, I first use a spring-loaded center punch to give them a dimple to center the drill. Then I drill the rivets out using a large drill to take away as much material as needed. The base comes loose without any problems. Now I can remove all the parts. And there's a lot of them. One of the hinges of the trunk lid keeps catching on the body. After some searching, I discovered that the frame behind the seats is slightly bent, lowering the hinge of the trunk and making it grind against the frame. I straighten it out off camera. The engine consists of two parts and is held with two plastic pegs. I thought those were rivets, so I cut them away, but actually you can just push them out with a screwdriver. The same goes for the headlights. There's a hole behind them, but they are quite tight and I have to use a pin and a screwdriver to force them out. The trunk and engine hood are very difficult to remove and I decide to leave them on, causing some difficulties in the process. I also push out the grill in the front bumper. The axles are clamped in place and have collected a bunch of lint and carpet hair. I even spot dog or cat hair. The spare wheel housing consists of a die cast front and a plastic chromed frame, which is also riveted. As I try to get it apart, I marvel at the build quality of these models. They were really made to stand the test of time. In order to repaint the bottom plate, I will have to remove the wheels. 
I grind away the top of the clamps in order to remove the axles. The metal parts go into the caustic soda to strip the paint. Corgi paints are among the toughest paints I encountered. The paint loosened but it only comes away when I go over it with the wire brush attachment. And even then some spots of paint hold on for dear life. After about half an hour of polishing and switching between different brushes, the paint is completely gone. I drill 1.5mm pilot holes in the front rivets. The rear rivets are too shallow and I don't want to risk drilling through the model. Then I tap a 2mm screw thread and do a test fit. Before I can start painting, I clean the metal parts with isopropyl alcohol. The metal parts all receive a coat of grey Vallejo hobby paint. It is at this point that I discovered that I forgot to drill the hole for the antenna. I cut a suitable antenna from a set of generic third-party antennas. I first make an indentation in the casting with the spring-loaded nail punch, which would turn out to be a mistake. Then I drill a 1.5mm hole and test fit the antenna. So I had to redo the paint three times. First I discovered that by punching the antenna hole I bent the frame, making the trunk lid catch against the body again and chipping the fresh paint. Of course straightening the frame back ruined the paint completely. The second time there were various problems. Even after two red coats the coverage wasn't perfect and tiny specks of primer were showing through. This was almost unnoticeable and I would have gone ahead with it, but when I accidentally got some super glue on the paint job, it was game over and back into the caustic soda. The plastic parts cleaned up nicely in the ultrasonic cleaner, but they get another good wash with a toothbrush and window cleaning liquid.
the worst scratches in the window unit are buffed out with high grade sandpaper. Then the windscreen is polished with polishing compound for car headlights. Some scratches however are rather deep, so they will still be visible. All the chrome parts will have to be rechromed. The front and rear bumper, the headlights, the engine and the frame of the spare wheel are sprayed with oven cleaner and left in a sealed container for 24 hours. When they come out they have been stripped to the bare plastic and they receive a new coat of chrome spray. Then it's time to refresh the wheels. They are pretty worn, as is the white wall paint. The Vegas Thunderbird did have white wall tires, so we'll have to redo those. The tires get a new coat of heavily tinted Tamiya X1 black. Then the wheel hubs are chromed with Molotov chrome. I tried a lot of methods to make the white walls as neat as possible. Finally, a Molotov white acrylic paint pen proves to be the best solution. I attach the axles to a clamp and hold the paint pen against the tire as I slowly turn the wheel. It's not perfect, but certainly not bad either. I also chrome the logo on the hood and the taillights. Then they receive a coat of Tamiya Clear Red. This makes the taillights more realistic and they stand out more against the red body of the car. Finally it's time to put the car back together. First I put the wheels back on the base plate and fix the axles with super glue and baking soda. This hardens like steel. Those axles won't be going anywhere soon and the wheels can still spin freely on their own. I glue the spare wheel casing back together with a drop of super glue. The cleaned front grille snaps back into the front bumper. The new antenna is pushed into the hole and sits very snug in there. No need for glue. Then comes the window and the dashboard, the engine, not forgetting the button that presses the hood up.
the front and the rear bumper with the spare wheel which is just held loosely in place and finally the interior. Now we can close the model up. The bottom plate snaps over the rear rivets and is fastened with the two screws in the front rivets. And here we are. The standard Corgi 1957 Ford Thunderbird has been transformed back into the licensed Thunderbird from the TV series Vegas. It was a difficult model to do, not because of the many parts, but because of the many problems with the trunk lid and the paint. Nevertheless, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. More restorations are coming up. See you in the next video.